Hey, what's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install PyTop OS on your Raspberry Pi 4. This also works on the Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B+, but I'm gonna be focusing on the Raspberry Pi 4. Recently, I did a review on the Pi Top 4, and it's an awesome little machine, but it does come in at a pretty hefty price. But I had a lot of my viewers asking about Pi Top OS, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install it on your Raspberry Pi 4. I'm also going to give you a quick demo at some of the things that this operating system has to offer. Now we're going to be flashing this to an SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4, and to flash it, I'm going to be using Windows 10 and an application called Etcher. If you're on Mac or Linux, the same application will work for you. After using PyTop OS for a little while, I really like it. It's based on Debian. It's pretty much just like Raspberry Pi OS, but we have a totally different layout. And I really do think that this would be easier to use for younger children or people just starting out with Linux. But don't get me wrong, this is still Linux and it's very powerful. So if you're ready to get started here, let's move over to my Windows PC and get everything set up. Alright, so let's go ahead and get PyTop OS installed to our micro SD card. First thing you're going to need is the OS itself, or the image. All links for everything mentioned in this video will be in the description. We can download it here, and like I mentioned, this was specifically designed for their PyTop products, like the PyTop 4 and their Seed Monitor, but this will work on the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, and the Raspberry Pi 4. So we've got the download going here, it's 2.3 gigabytes. While this is downloading, let's go ahead and grab another application that's going to easily allow us to flash this to our micro SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to be using Etcher. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. We're going to go with the portable Windows version. So once Etcher is finished downloading and the PyTop OS image, I'm going to place these on my desktop for easy access. Okay, so everything's finished downloading. Over here we have Etcher and PyTop OS. This is the image we're going to be flashing to our micro SD card. Let's go ahead and start up Etcher. Now I've already inserted my micro SD card into my PC. I'm using a cheaper USB 3.0 micro SD card reader. From within Etcher, we're going to choose Flash from File. From here, we need to navigate to where we downloaded PyTop OS. I've just placed mine on my desktop. It might be in your downloads folder. We're going to choose the PyTop OS zip. Just double click. It's going to load it up in Etcher for us. Next thing we need to do is choose our micro SD card. By choosing Select Target. Now this is going to populate a list of different drives that are plugged into your PC. Make sure you're choosing the correct drive. I'm using a 64 gigabyte micro SD card with that USB reader. 100% positive that this is my SD. Select. And now all we need to do is flash. Etcher is going to go ahead and take care of everything for us. It's going to flash it to the SD card. Just be patient with it. Once it's finished, it'll prompt you. PyTop OS is now finished flashing to our SD card. All we need to do is close this down, remove our SD card from our PC, move over to our Raspberry Pi 4, insert the SD card, HDMI, keyboard, and our power. All right, so real quick, I just have my Raspberry Pi 4 plugged into my HDMI. Make sure my monitor's turned on. I also have my keyboard. And we're going to insert that fresh SD card that we just flashed PyTop OS to. Now it's time to plug in the power, and the first boot's going to take a lot longer than any of the others because it does need to get some stuff ready on that SD card, like expanding the file system. And once it gets up and running, you'll be prompted with the welcome screen. So I'm now connected to my game capture just to make it a little easier to look at. Are you ready to be a maker? I mean, this is just going to give you a quick walkthrough. Choose your language, choose your locale, and your keyboard. It's going to ask you if you're over 13 years old. It'll ask for an email, but you can skip or throw your email in there if you want to. We're going to restart. It's going to get everything ready for us. And once we're rebooted, it's just going to ask us to connect to the internet. You can click on the little Wi-Fi logo down here, or if you're using Ethernet, just plug it in. I'm going to go with Wi-Fi. It's going to prompt us to update. And that's it. We're now running PyTop OS on our Raspberry Pi 4. This is a very easily accessible operating system for younger people or people who are just starting out. Personally, I like the layout of it. It's still just as powerful as Raspbian, otherwise known as Raspberry Pi OS. And this does work on the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model. As you can see, running the 8 gig here. We have a lot of great applications pre-installed, and this is mainly geared towards education and programming. So as you can see here, we have Code Light, Genie, 
Mew or MU, Scratch 2, Scratch 3, Sonic Pi. And I've always wanted to make a video on this. This is actually available in Raspberry Pi OS. This allows you to easily create music on your Raspberry Pi through live coding. Under Office, we have the full LibreOffice suite. We have Chromium built in. You can install Firefox if you'd like. Personally, I would just stick with Chromium here on a Raspberry Pi. VLC Player, GIMP, Image Magic, Image Viewer, MT Paint, and under Games, we have Minecraft Pi and Python games. Keep in mind, the Minecraft Pi Edition isn't as feature rich as, let's say, Minecraft Pocket Edition or even Minecraft on your Xbox, PS3, or your PC, but it's still a fully playable version of Minecraft on your Raspberry Pi. Under System Tools, one thing I actually really like, especially for a beginner operating system, is the Check for Updates feature. We do not have to open up Terminal to check for all of our important updates. It has the built-in PyTop OS software updater. And if there's any updates available, we can download them and install them right here. Very easy to do. We also have Disk Usage Analyzer, Simple Task Manager, which we took a look at here. Give us our CPU usage and our RAM usage. I have that 8 gigabyte model and I'm only using 246 megabytes. And there's also HTOP pre-installed. More feature rich. And as you can see, we have a lot more information here. I'm not sure how well this is coming up on my game capture. It looks a little dark on screen. But this gives you tons of information about what your Raspberry Pi is doing in the background for your CPU and memory. And we do have an update, so we can choose Upgrade Now or we can preview the updates. And it will just give us a terminal window, tell us exactly what's being updated. And it looks like there's a lot of stuff here that needs to be updated. Under Accessories, we have pretty much everything we need. Calculator, File Manager, PDF Viewer, SD Card Copier. We can open up Terminal from here. Universal Access, On-Screen Keyboard. Help, we have some PyTop documentation. Debian Reference. And under Preferences, we have Recommended Software. And this is Recommended Software for the Raspberry Pi. So if we go in here, from All Programs, we can go ahead and browse everything that's recommended for the Pi. Education games and I'm going to install code the classics here. We already have VNC viewer but we can install clause mail. We have LibreOffice installed and since I'm going to install code the classics we'll just choose OK. It's going to download and install the packages for us. Installation is complete. If we go back here to games we have the Code the Classic games installed, just like on Raspberry Pi OS. And if you do want to install some retro games, you can always install RetroPie right alongside here, so you'd have it up in the menu. Overall, I like it. It's a clean operating system, easy to navigate, and it's very reminiscent of other operating systems on the market right now, because of the taskbar at the bottom. And I know to a lot of longtime users of Linux, this is not a big deal. But for somebody just picking up Linux, I think having this taskbar kind of laid out like a Windows machine really helps out. And since this is a full-fledged Linux operating system, we don't have to rely on the software stores. We can actually open up Terminal from here or press Ctrl-Alt-T on your keyboard. And you can install any other Linux application that's compatible with ARM. Like let's say OpenShot, a full-fledged video editor that does run on the Raspberry Pi 4. So you'll just type in sudo apt install openshot. And I personally really like this video editor and I specifically use this on single board computers like the Raspberry Pi 4. And we'll let this install. And once it's installed, we can go back to our applications, sound and video, and we have openshot. Now I do have to say that there is a little bit of a learning curve here if you're just starting out and running this on the Raspberry Pi isn't gonna be optimal. It does export video, you can edit, you can add different effects in here, but it's gonna take a little time to export because we have a very low powered ARM single board computer. But it will work and it will get you by. If you wanna do home movies with this, it'll work perfectly. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching and hope you at least try out PyTop OS. It's actually a really nice little Debian based operating system for the Raspberry Pi. It's 32-bit right now. Hopefully they do release a 64-bit version for the new Raspberry Pi 8 gigabyte model. But like it sits right now, it actually works pretty great on the Raspberry Pi 4. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.